The iPad A16 and the iPad Air M3 might look very similar, and at first glance, you might think that these are the same exact iPad. But in the real world, there's actually a ton of differences between these two iPads, and I think that they're designed for very different users. So in this video, I'm gonna help you decide if you should buy the A16 iPad, or if you should go all the way up to getting the M3 iPad Air. The first thing that you'll notice whenever you have them side by side is they look almost exactly identical. They have pretty much the same design, although the iPad Air has the smart connector on the back of it. The iPad A16 has the smart connector for keeping a keyboard attached on the side of it instead. They also both have a single USB-C port on it, although the speeds of the USB ports are different. On the iPad Air M3, you get speeds all the way up to the 10 gigabit a second, and on the iPad A16, you get five gigabit a second USB-C speeds, which is just gonna change the speed of the peripherals that you keep plugged into. For most people, you're really not gonna notice a difference unless you're really trying to use this with external displays. They also both have a Touch ID port, and they also have a single camera on the back and the volume up and down buttons. You can also see the side slots for the speakers on them. I did notice that the speakers on the iPad Air M3 sound better than the ones on the iPad A16, but if you're using them in the real world, you're really not gonna notice a huge difference unless you put them side by side. The next big difference between the two of them is even though they both come with the 11 inch screen, you can also upgrade and get the iPad Air M3 with a 13 inch screen if you really wanna have a bigger one. The other thing that's different about them is the color profiles on them. The iPad A16 supports sRGB color, which is gonna be pretty good, but the iPad Air M3 supports the P3 color gamut, which is just gonna be a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more accurate. Another big difference in the real world is the iPad Air M3 has the anti-reflective coating, and it's just a little bit brighter, although they both are technically rated for 500 nits of brightness. I could just tell that the display quality on the iPad Air is a little bit better, even though the resolution on them is the same. So just know if you really care about display quality, the iPad Air M3 is the way to go. I also found the battery life on these to both be about the same, whether I was using them for web browsing or just for typing notes on them or for streaming videos, the batteries performed very similarly. The big difference between these two devices and really what the name is about is the M3 chip in the A16 chip. So the iPad A16 has the A16 chip, which is really just a repurposed phone chip. But for most people, you're really not gonna notice that it's not as good a performance because if you use the iPad for things like browsing the web or streaming or looking up recipes, it really handles all those very well. But the iPad Air M3 has the M3 chip, which is the same chip you could get in the MacBook Air M3. So you're really gonna be getting laptop-like performance out of the iPad. And it also has the media engine, which is gonna be better if you're doing any sort of video editing or processing, it's gonna greatly increase the speed of exporting. So on paper, that means the iPad Air has an eight core CPU and a nine core GPU, and the iPad A16 has the five core CPU and a four core GPU. You also get eight gigabytes of RAM on the iPad Air M3, and you only get six gigabytes of RAM on the iPad A16, which isn't gonna make a huge difference if you're just using it for iPad-y kind of things but the extra RAM does help for better processing performance. Another crucial difference relating to the chip is that the iPad Air supports Apple Intelligence and the A16 iPad does not. This means you won't get access to the advanced AI features like enhanced writing tools, image generation, or a more personalized Siri on the A16 model. But Apple Intelligence still isn't completely launched yet, so to me, this isn't a huge deal. Where I found most people will notice the difference in performance is the fact that on the iPad A16, the only kind of multitasking it supports is the split view or the side view. But with the iPad Air M3, you can actually use Stage Manager on it. So you can be moving and resizing apps and having multiple apps open at the same time. And just, it makes for a much more fluid experience, especially if you wanna use them with external displays. Because the iPad A16 does support an external display, but it really can only do full screen video or it'll just mirror your display. But the iPad Air M3 actually supports a second completely different display. So if you pair this with a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse, it feels a lot more like using a computer. iPad OS still isn't quite on the same level as using Mac OS, but it's getting better. And I definitely noticed that the iPad Air M3 can give you a much more computer-like experience. The next big difference between the two of these is the keyboards they support. The iPad A16 has the smart connector on the bottom of it and it supports the Apple Magic Keyboard Folio, or it also can use some of Logitech's different keyboards that also add the trackpad and the keyboard to it. The iPad Air M3 supports the Apple Magic Keyboard or some of the different Logitech options. And I really prefer the Magic Keyboard because of the cantilever design on it. It just makes it better to use on a lap because it's one solid surface and the angle of it is a little bit easier to adjust. The Magic Keyboard Folio isn't quite as nice as the Apple Magic Keyboard for the iPad Air is. Depending on your storage needs, you can also get the iPad A16 in 128, 256, or 512 gigabyte capacities but the iPad Air supports all the way up to one terabyte of storage. But they both start at the base model of 128 gigabytes of storage. 
which is a little bit disappointing to say the least. If you're into the Apple Pencil or drawing, then the iPad A16 supports either the original Apple Pencil with a USB-C to lightning adapter, or it also supports the Apple Pencil with USB-C. The iPad Air supports either the Apple Pencil with USB-C, or it also supports the Apple Pencil Pro, which gives you a couple of additional features like an extra button on the side and also the ability to twist it and do barrel rolls, and a little bit better pressure sensitivity. So if you're really into drawing, then you should get the iPad Air over the iPad A16. A few other differences, these both have the landscape camera on the front of them, which is really nice because when you're looking directly at the iPad, it just feels more natural than looking off to the side corner like the older iPad models used to have the front camera over off to the side. So I love that on both of these, but the front camera on the iPad Air M3 is a little bit better than the A16 model. Here's a quick test of the front camera on the M3 iPad Air so you can get an idea of what it will sound and look like with just one light off to the side. Here's a test of the front camera on the 11th generation iPad so you can get an idea of what it'll look like and sound like for most basic video calls. The back cameras perform pretty much identically from my test, but I don't think many people are buying either of these just to use them for the camera. Another huge difference between these is the colors they're available in. The iPad Air is available in either space gray, starlight, you can get it in purple, or you can also get it in the new blue color, which I really love how the sky blue color looks. I have it in starlight, and I think that's a great color as well. The A16 comes in more vibrant colors. You can get it in silver, a yellow, a pink, or there's also the darker blue color, which also looks pretty cool to me. One other difference is the iPad Air has Wi-Fi 6E chip on it, but the iPad A16 only has Wi-Fi 6. Again, most people aren't gonna really care or notice the difference in the real world. The main difference between the two of these is the price. The iPad A16 starts at $350 and the iPad Air starts at $600. So the price is pretty far off on them. So how do you decide if you should get the iPad Air or if you should get the iPad A16? If you really just wanna get the essential iPad with all the basic features for browsing the web, reading books, watching videos, things like that, that's when I say just get the Apple iPad A16 because it has really good battery life, the USB-C port, it does pretty much everything that you need it to. And you can always pair it with the Magic Keyboard Folio if you wanna type or use any other Bluetooth keyboard, use one of the Logitech keyboard cases. It's just a really great iPad, especially if you wanna use it with AirPods, that's really gonna help cover up the issue of the speakers not sounding quite as good. To me, you really go up and you get the iPad Air M3 if you wanna use it as more of a laptop, if you wanna get the Apple Magic Keyboard, if you wanna do multitasking with it, using Stage Manager, if you're gonna be doing more drawing, if you're gonna do any type of video editing, or more intensive applications that need the higher processor power or need more RAM, that's when you need to get the iPad Air M3 instead. Because this one is really a computer in the body of an iPad, and the Apple iPad A16 is really just an iPad. So to me, that's what you need to decide. Do you need a computer in the body of an iPad, or do you just need an iPad? Because if you just need an iPad, the Apple iPad A16 is gonna be the best option for you save a lot of money by getting that one. But if you need to have the higher processing power, the better screen, the better speakers, the better multitasking, that's when you should get the Apple iPad Air M3 instead because it's just gonna bump everything to the next level without having to go all the way up to a more expensive Apple iPad Pro. If you're interested in buying either of these, I do have links to buy these and also my favorite iPad accessories in the description below. If you got any questions, comments, or if you think I'm wrong, leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear them. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.